breathing, so I'll be nice and easy. February 26th, 2009. Sarah Reinfelder is wheeled into the delivery room. The atmosphere is tense and the prognosis unclear. But her doctors know one thing. They're about to witness something that defies all medical logic. This is a case that I will never forget. Sarah and Shane Reinfelder of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, are just beginning their life together as husband and wife when they get an unexpected surprise. I got pregnant within the first three months of our marriage. We weren't actually planning for kids. We were both kind of shocked. Then I was at work one day and started feeling real crampy in my stomach. I just wasn't feeling it. And I realized I was bleeding. Shane rushed me to the emergency room. And they said that what was happening from the cramping was that she was miscarrying. I was in shock. I had to sit there and try and tell myself, this is really actually happening. You know, you can't do anything about it. But while Sarah's at the hospital, the doctor discovers something even more devastating. She's like, well, you have two uteruses. Did you know that? And I was like, no. I didn't know that. Sarah's condition is extremely rare. It's called uterine didelphus and occurs in less than 0.05% of women in the world. That is why you miscarried. The two uteri share a muscle wall intended for just one uterus. As a result, the muscle tends to be thinner and weaker, almost always resulting in miscarriage or preterm delivery. She told us because of my uterine abnormality that I was probably never going to be able to have kids in my life, ever. I was very mad. And I thought, why on earth can I not just have a normal body like everybody else? This has not happened to everybody. Why is it happening to me? It's just a hard-hitting blow that you don't really, you don't see coming. Pretty much all that was running through our mind was how much we wanted to have babies of our own and how much we wanted to have our own family. And it felt like someone just completely came in and just ripped it all away from me. I thought it was completely just the end. But it isn't the end. In fact, it's just the start of an emotionally draining roller coaster ride that will go on for nearly two more years. You know, I told Shay, I was like, I feel like I'm pregnant, but I, there's no way I'm pregnant. He was like, no, you're not pregnant. We broke down and got a pregnancy test, and it popped up positive. And I was like, OK. But you know, it could be false positive. You know, They said I couldn't have kids. So we ended up going to the doctor. Sure enough, there's a little baby baby. And we about jumped out of our skin. And we were so happy. And we actually saw the baby. You know, the baby was healthy. The baby was growing, you know, wiggling. You know, Shane called him a little amoeba. Given her high-risk condition, Sarah is put on strict bed rest and monitored closely. As the weeks progress, the couple's hopes begin to grow. I kept going to the doctor. They kept checking the baby. Oh, you know, the baby's fine. They basically told her there is a slight chance that you could carry this one long enough that we could do a C-section and the baby could survive. That means hitting a minimum of 27 or 28 weeks. Well, there was just like a flood of relief knowing that, you know, we might stand a chance this time. But suddenly, Sarah starts bleeding, and the thought of miscarriage is back on everyone's mind. After about a month, the bleeding just stopped. It just stopped. You know, I was figuring, you know, OK, it stopped. It'll be back in a couple days. It never came back. I ended up going through the rest of my pregnancy with my son just, just fine. It went perfect. Take a nice breath. You'll be all right. We got to turn her in head first. Defying all odds, Sarah makes it. And on April 8, 2008, she and Shane welcome a healthy six pound, 10 ounce baby William into the world. Put everything behind us, you know, the miscarriage, everything, the heartache, it was gone. You know, we had this wonderful little baby boy. We had our little family and we were happy with it. But just three months after the birth of their miracle baby, Sarah is pregnant again. This time, she'll make headlines around the world. This is going to be a, a bit of a surprise. Rather than seeing one baby, there are two. And he looks at it, he goes, yeah. He's like, you're having a double pregnancy. There is a baby in each uterus. 
this is extremely rare. Only about 70 women in the world have ever been known to be pregnant with a baby in each of two wombs, and only a small percentage of those pregnancies have made it to delivery. As a result, Sarah's pregnancies are not expected to last long. In fact, she and her husband Shane can't even find a doctor willing to see her through. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. <laughs> they said, I didn't even know that this problem existed until you guys are up here, you know? After a desperate search, the couple is finally referred to a team of OBGYNs led by doctors Connie Hedmark and Brianna Pond. Sarah. Shane, hi. I'm Dr. Hedmark. Nice really nice to meet you. This is a case that I will never forget. I'll probably never see this again. And I still am, you know, shocked by the whole thing. You have a very unusual situation going on. What happened in Sarah's case is she has two ovaries in each one ovulated, so that an egg was released from each ovary, passed on through the fallopian tubes, then fertilized, and the pregnancy was implanted, one on each side, one in each uteri. They occurred basically at the same time or within 24 hours. It's not like they were weeks apart. They couldn't be. A woman can't get pregnant in a second uterus when she's already pregnant in the first. The body won't produce another ovulation after the first pregnancy is underway. You, you certainly are breaking all the odds, you know that. <laughs> At first, our thought was, well, it's not even going to happen anyway. The odds that you would be actually be able to carry a baby in each uterus to viability, which is essentially past 24 weeks, is extremely rare. The numbers come up to be something like one in three to five million. The problem is, is that when there are two uteri, there can be an inequality of the strength of the uterus. So the risk of miscarriage goes way up, possibility of preterm delivery to the point where viability is just simply not a possibility. We could lose both babies. When a baby is born prematurely, um, they have a very high chance of difficulty with their lung development, respiratory difficulties. They can even have problems with their brain. With a pregnancy like this, it's a, it's a package. Um, you're worried about the babies. You're worried about the mom. We evaluate the babies on a fairly frequent basis by ultrasound and monitoring to make sure that there's adequate growth. I'm 20 weeks into the pregnancy. You know, we, we found out, you know, that they were both girls. My husband was hoping for two boys, but two girls. And um, we found out they were both girls. I was excited. I'm never, no longer going to be outnumbered. And um, so we're feeling a little bit better about life. We're feeling, you know, that, that there's going to be some hope here. You know, we're not out of the woods. We're nowhere close to being out of the woods yet. But, you know, we're at least halfway through the woods. Is your first baby? No, no, second and third. Wow. Some of the special precautions that were necessary with Sarah was to make sure that she was at bed rest and not doing anything strenuous because with her decreased activity, we could decrease the risk of preterm labor. To everyone's amazement, the precautions actually seem to work. And in late December 2008, the babies passed the crucial 24-week mark. We were happy. We were thrilled, shocked. It's at this point that we begin to get excited that we think, you know, we're going to make this. We are actually going to get babies. And we're going to get two babies. So from there, every week was just icing on the cake. Once we got to that mark, then we started going, no way. Now, now what? Doctors Headmark and Pond know they must prepare for the delivery of two babies from separate uteri, something few doctors in the world have ever done before. When we got to 32 weeks and Sarah's health was deteriorating, ultimately we knew we were going to have to make a decision soon as to when we deliver. Sure enough, I started going into labor. I think I'm ready. You know, I'm having contractions. I'm going into labor completely. Dr. Hedmark's on her way over. Although we got to 33 weeks, they're still seven weeks premature, and that's not a small number. Everybody finally realizes that we're gonna have to have the babies that day, within the hour. Well, that's a pretty good contraction. And I am freaking out. 
when you have a baby in each uterus, the chance of a vaginal delivery just is really not possible because they're going to be competing for the exit. So we knew that we would be delivering Sarah by cesarean section. I've done thousands of C-sections, but not one side by side. So I was concerned what would happen to the other baby while I was taking care of the first baby. We're gonna have a baby here soon, Sarah. When I entered the abdomen, I decided to deliver the baby on the left first. That just seemed anatomically the easier one to get to first. Usually, even with twins, you have one big uterus, but here you had two big uteri, which is something you're just not accustomed to seeing. I want to see what's going on. Pretty soon, Sarah. She's looking oh. good. And all of a sudden, we hear the best scream I've ever heard in my life. That's your prayer. We have baby in. Okay. We heard Kaylin come out screaming her lungs out. You know, here's baby A, and they pulled, pulled out Kaylin and held her up over the curtain, and it was, it was wonderful. But it isn't long before things take a frightening turn. Delivery of the first baby unexpectedly causes the weight of the second to shift and rotate, putting the second uterus dangerously out of reach. I was worried about how I was going to get to the baby, because as soon as you deliver one baby, the second baby uh, needs to be delivered as soon as possible. With extreme care, Dr. Hedmark and her team attempt to manually twist the second uterus back into position. You just focus. You focus on what you know you need to do, and you just concentrate. After struggling for nearly two frightening minutes, doctors finally reach the second baby. We heard a second scream, and Valerie come out, and she was fine. We have baby B. She's looking really good. She's breathing oh. on her own. Just knowing that they were alive at that moment was wonderful. It was a relief that we had been waiting for. When you see these babies and they come out crying and you just think, this is just truly amazing. I will never see this again in my life and this is why I do this job. The twins spend seven weeks in the neonatal intensive care unit before going home. Now, at just over a year old, the girls are happy, healthy, and have earned their spot in the medical history books. I got my boy, I got two girls, I'm, I'm set. I'm the luckiest person in the world. I'm thankful that I have my, my two girls and my baby boy. I like to think that every pregnant mom has a right to believe her pregnancy is the most special.